Hello, everyone. Welcome to Crayfish Weekly Webinar Series, China Let's Talk Business. I'm Jane Ru. I'm the head of business development at Crayfish.io and also the moderator today. Uh, welcome to you all. So there are mainly two drivers, I think, for like businesses thinking of entering the Chinese market. So firstly, because of its huge market size where you can achieve revenue growth. Or secondly, to manufacture in China because of uh, China's combined excellence in uh, product design, in product development, its pro productivity, and also its overall supply chain management skill set. So today's webinar is about uh, supply chain, um, on how to choose the right suppliers and the manufacturers in China, especially for small and medium enterprises, how to make full use of China's technological advantages to uh, kind of help um, with your own product development. So for those who are new to crayfish.io, we are a digital platform facilitating cross-board trade with a um, focus on China and uh, Southeast Asia. We provide the support to your, your journey to the East from uh, strategy and the planning to um, marketing and sales to operation on the ground. Yeah, so uh, we work in a different way to provide valuable solutions to businesses in all sizes. We have our marketplace where you can uh, post projects and find talents yourself. We have um, uh, pre-scoped best value services, which you receive quality guarantee with fixed price services. Um, if you have specific needs, we, uh, we can also uh, tailor our services for you as well. So uh, powered by uh, technology, we have an extensive network of pre-approved bilingual service providers across sectors to support you uh, in the Chinese market. So today uh, we invited Laura Pan, our strategic partner and the supply chain expert to give this talk. Uh, Laura has 16 years of experience managing um, electronics and semiconductor manufacturing and also distribution. Uh, she worked at IBM and several other companies before joining OFD Shenzhen, uh, as mentioned, our strategic partner on uh, the supply chain services. So we have jointly developed uh, um, services together and which are now available on our platform and I will also introduce to you um, in the next uh, few uh, minutes. So uh, Laura, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Laura and I'm the partner at uh, OFD Company Limited. I'm really glad to have this opportunity to join today's event, this webinar, to give you some most updated Chinese manufacturing status and to share with you our insight and the practice. Uh, uh, OFD, like Jim just mentioned, uh, OFD is a critical uh, Crayfish uh, strategic partner, and we provide the supply chain services on, on Crayfish platform. We believe that uh, this platform is a very valuable tool for both the customers in UK and Europe, and also the uh, service provider like us in China. Uh, let me let me give you a very short introduction of OFD. OFD is located in, in Shenzhen, the high-tech hub in China. 
we integrate the, the best technology resources in China, and we provide the all-in-one software development and uh, hardware development and uh, electronic engineering to the overseas customers and also the, the project management services. We focus on uh, the industries like uh, IoT, uh, wireless products, network product, and some uh, bank equipment and terminals. My session today, uh, I will cover four parts. The first part will be the China, China manufacturing status update. I'll give you some stat statistics of the manufacturing status in China today. And also I will cover the, the benefit from China supply chain, especially for small and medium enterprises and the startups. And of course, then we move to the, the really practical one, how to locate the right supplier in China. And the, the last part, I will give you a case which uh, we, uh, as OFD, we help the customer to locate the right supplier in China and we complete the delivery already. Okay, let's start uh, from, the, from the number. You know, um, in the past uh, 30 years, uh, China's uh, manufacturing industry has been developing uh, quickly. And uh, right now is that, you know, as everyone knows that China is the, the world's uh, biggest uh, output in terms of uh, industry production. And uh, the, the manufacturing industry output uh, contributes nearly 30% of the, the country's GDP. And also China ranks number one uh, globally. And also, you know, talking about the UK, uh, I checked the numbers and I realized that, that uh, it's actually China and the UK, uh, you know, the UK is uh, always been China, the China's uh, a main trading partner for many years. And uh, even the, there's, uh, there's up and down, but the overall trade volume between the two countries has been on a steady upward trend over the past few years. According to the, the number the, uh, provided by HM Revenue and the Customers, China currently the third largest uh, trading partner of UK. You see that uh, China has a strong industrial production capability. And uh, also China provides the most uh, diversified products. The industrial manufacturing also become a very important engine and it drive the, the whole world industrial growth. You know, uh, in the, there's a number that in, among those uh, more than 500 major industrial products, China ranks first in the output of uh, 220. Well, you see that the, the, in the, in the, the number shows that uh, uh, electronic machinery and equipment and the computers integrated the circuits, they, they, those products ranks, uh, num ranks at, the, at the top in terms of the export output. But here, the, I would like to talk about some, some challenges that uh, China manufacturing still faces. Uh, like the, the, the smile curve indicates that uh, the, the manufacturing, especially the low end manufacturing basically contributes the least value. And uh, although that it occupies quite a lot of manpower and the land and the, the land as, and the energy consumption, but the, it contributes the least value. So, this is uh, what, uh, what we have to face. And the government and many businessmen also realize that this, this is a challenge, but it's also opportunity. So right now with the labor cost uh, rising in China and with the more strict uh, environmental protection policies being issued, some low end manufacturers have to move out from China, but some other Chinese companies, when this, they decided to 
to upgrade their, their production and their services. The, some of those uh, companies, they, they have their in-house R&D. They also started to develop to master more uh, know-how and uh, master more production process and create a more flexible supply chain so they could stay competitive. Uh, I give you the very, very simple example how the electronic manufacturing industry is evolving. At the very beginning, quite a lot of Chinese uh, EMS companies, they provided the service with what we call consignment model, which means the, the overseas customers would bring all the material and consign the material, the raw materials to the Chinese manufacturer. So the manufacturer just to focus on production and they charge very, very little in terms of the, the what they call manufacturing value added. So basically it's labor cost only. And then some of those companies, they have their, they develop their own uh, purchasing department and they have some sourcing and the purchasing expertise. So they could provide the, what we call turnkey service, which means they were all, they were purchasing the material by themselves and they provide a turnkey solution to the customer. So the customer that don't need to worry about getting all the, the components, all the raw materials to the factory. Later on, the manufacturer, they, they, they further develop the, themselves. They provide a more uh, like the, the, the better process, production process and a better cost. They do the optimization. Right now, with more and more companies, they realize that uh, the, the R&D capability is the key to their business. So they have their in-house R&D team and they provide the alternative technical solution to the customer. So, and also they can provide the flexible supply chain services. Uh, just for example, we all know that there's a chip shortage since uh, last, uh, I think Q4 in last year, many Chinese EMS companies, they started uh, promoting their own solution to the overseas customers by replacing those chips in serious shortage. So they can still make sure that the customer will have their products up, uh, delivered on time. So this is a very, very big change in the EMS industry. So like I said, uh, the manufacturers in China, they are evolving so they can stay uh, competitive in the whole industry. Okay, Let, let's talk about the, the benefit from, from China supply chain. And uh, I think uh, I'll use one of our customer as, a, as an example. Okay. Say that uh, you, this, this customer is basically a startup company. They have the, the brilliant idea and they want to make it uh, happen and they want to build a product to commercialize their idea. But uh, they need someone to help them to make it happen. So they, some, uh, they find us and uh, they have this innovative idea they want the, uh, the the first, the first part is to build a sample. So we reached the, one of the very good uh, supplier in China and uh, the production engineering team and uh, together worked together with us, we reviewed the whole product concept to make sure that the, this is a doable product. I mean, it's uh, the feasibility review and uh, we do the evaluation to make to tell the customer that okay this is your idea and it's good it's very good but you may need some modification so you can have the final product available with the the, the cost uh, with the the cost under control this is the first step and then they have the sample to be built you know building a sample is not that easy because even the sample normally means that it's a, the small quantity but you still need to collect all the components. And also you need to convince someone, the manufacturer who is willing to invest their time and efforts and engineering resources 
on this sample. So, but luckily we're in China and we can look, we can have a different kind of uh, suppliers and the resources. They have to quickly help us to do the bomb kitting and we build the, the PCBA and the sample quickly. When it comes to the mass production, what the customer need is a reliable supply and a competitive cost and the quality assurance, which you can find a, a reliable, I mean, the very, very reliable manufacturer in China who can provide all the services. And also the Chinese companies, they are willing to participate into customers product upgrade because they after a certain period of time, when the Chinese companies, they know the product more, they know the product very well, they can help the customer, they can contribute some idea to the customer to make the product even better. Here talk about the, the next is how to, how to locate the right supplier in China. I think some of you is, uh, some of you are very, very curious how to find the right supplier or how to qualify. So this is the general, general practice. Basically, you first, the first step is you need to have the supplier, supplier leads and you can have uh, quite a lot of channels to get those leads. And then you, you need to do the screen and then you get the quotation, the, the sample for evaluation, and better to have to have the in-person meeting with the, the supplier to visit the supplier and to do the factory audit and the, to negotiate the, the business terms and the conditions. Then you can sign the contract. How to locate the, the there's the channels. Basically the very traditional one is the trade show and exhibition. And I, quite a lot of people say, okay, it seems like a, unlikely to happen because uh, you know it, since the pandemic, uh, yes, there's a lot of trade show and exhibition they are currently go online. So you still have the chance to, to get access to those trade shows. And also there's, uh, there are some websites, a very famous one, like Made in China, there's the online directory, so you can, you can locate the, the, the supplier leads from those websites. Uh, although the, two, the top two channels are very uh, often, it's very famous and very, quite a lot of people are using it, but it do, the disadvantage is there are too many, too many uh, information on it, and you need to spend time and efforts to spring to sort it out which one is the, what is the exactly fit your requirement. So my, my suggestion is you can go to the, your, some of the, the industry association. I think in your industry, there's always uh, some association that, that you can contact or you can get the business referral from some of your business partners. And of course, you can find the, the, a, pla a very good platform like a Crayfish and they have this kind of service available. And also you can find some, some professional agent like, uh, like OFD. <laughs> yeah, we're happy to help you to find uh, the, the right supplier in China. Uh, here's a few tips from us. First, before you, you decide to go outsource your production, you, you need to review the, your product in detail to confirm that uh, all your requirement because uh, you need to introduce all your requirement to the potential supplier and you need to understand if they have the capability to build your product the way that you want them to build. So first you need to review your product thoroughly. And also the very important thing is better to plan ahead your intellectual property, like your brand, like your patent, everything. So this is a very necessary, especially for the innovation company, for the startup. And, this, and the third one is you, when, you, when you screen the suppliers, you can prioritize those companies who had the geographic advantage because uh, in China, there's a, China is a, you know, it's a very big country and we have like a, 
more than 350,000 companies, manufacturers, I mean. And uh, there's a, what we call industrial cluster. That means that let's just for example, I, I, I show you the, the map here is uh, those are the PCB manufacturers located in China. So if you decided to go outsource in China, you better consider that, that uh, there's uh, some, some of the companies, they have this kind of advantage because they're upscreening the suppliers and their supply chains in that area is very strong. So it can provide a better service to you. And of course, you need to do the due diligence check on the supplier. You don't want to get involved in any potential troubles. And of course, I know uh, Crayfish is also providing this kind of service. And then the very important and very crucial one is the factory audit. Before signing the formal contract, you'd better have someone either from your company or from a professional third party to go visit the factory and to audit the factory, all the facility, all the process, the production line. Okay, here I would like to share with you a, a real case that uh, we, this is the case uh, that OFD is uh, working on, is keep working on actually. The customer, the customer A actually, uh, this is uh, the customer uh, in located in, in Mexico. It is uh, one, uh, one of the biggest uh, IT company in, in that country. And they have this, uh, how to say, they have this uh, opportunity to provide the mini passport product to one of the biggest uh, bank in, in Mexico. But the, this company, they, just, they don't have a very rich hardware experience in terms of this, port, this project. So they reached OFD to access to locate some of the qualified supplier for them. So they provided the, the requirement and the details. Since this is a customized project and this is a terminal to be used to be integrated into the bank system. So there's a certain certification are required. And then uh, we started uh, collecting the information and we located three Chinese manufacturers. All of them, they are qualified and certified to, to produce this kind of product. And uh, we, we reached the, those companies and we uh, asked them to do the quotation and we helped them to negotiate the, uh, we helped them to get the samples first and then uh, later on, uh, upon the, the customer decided it, to pick one of them and we helped them to negotiate the, 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 all the business terms and the conditions. And then uh, of course the price. So after the, the couple times of negotiation, the customer finally decided to sign the contract with the company. Since we also serve as the, the project management we also provided the project management service to this customer. So we help uh, the customer to make sure that the production is going smoothly because they have the deadline to catch. And we assist the customer with the, the manufacturer to have the regular conference to review the process. And uh, before the delivery, we also help, help the customer to check those parts to check those uh, the all the production to to do the pre shipment ins inspection, make sure everything is good before the shipment, and uh, basically this is the whole thing we we have done, and uh, the, the good news is the first uh, the first delivery was made uh, in February, and we kept, we we met the the deadline, and which make the customer and the customers uh, customer I mean the bank very happy. So uh, we already helped the, the, the customer to win the second order, the, the second batch of order uh, in March. And we believe that it will be an ongoing and long-term partnership. And uh, the customer has more confidence with this supplier uh, as well. So here's a couple of the slides. This is what we have done for this customer. This is the factory audit report. This basically covers everything 
from the facility, from the factory, from the production line, warehouse, the quality uh, assurance process, the test, and the certification, of course. You can see that uh, it's, uh, we spend a whole day in the, in the factory to check everything. This is a very good factory in China, and we have this, this kind of resources uh, quite a lot, especially in Guangdong. And also this is, uh, this is the precision the inspection. It is also the service we're providing. We also put out this service on a crayfish platform. You, you can check with them for, for details. And you see that we have the, the outlook check and check the function and also check the, the packing, everything to make sure that, the, that this product is, if meet all the requirement that the customer has. Uh, this basically uh, covers all my uh, all my introduction today. Uh, at the, I think the the one I would like to mention is, uh, you know, China is uh, currently in China the high tech uh, high tech industry is uh, is developing very quickly, and uh, many Chinese companies there some of them they are not very big but they are doing very good job to provide a solution to provide the solution to the, not just the Chinese customers, but also to international customers. Uh, we as the, our company as the, the integration company to, we want to integrate those solutions and we want to help the overseas customers to make sure their success, because uh, we think technology really can change the world and we want to contribute our efforts to this, in, to the whole world, not just uh, to the Chinese customers. And uh, we're, we're glad that uh, Crayfish is building this platform to help us to do so. And I'm sure that uh, uh, we both can benefit a lot from this platform. Okay, uh, basically this is today's my, my session and I'll hand it over to, to Jane. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Laura, for this uh, uh, very insightful uh, sharing the industry uh, update and also the case studies, they are really helpful. And uh, um, do you please exit to the share screen? Okay. Yeah, so uh, very relevant to, to uh, Laura's sharing just now. I would like to show you very quickly of the services we developed together. Uh, in particular on the supply chain category. Uh, so from here on our website, if you go to the category page of supply chain, you can see all the services that we developed for now. So as Laura mentioned, from searching and the shortlist to the manufacturers to uh, the factory audit and the pre-shipment inspection. So if you are looking for these services, you can have a look and uh, go into the uh, service page to see the scope and the deliverables of this service. You can see all the details here and it's really quick uh, and easy process to sign up on our platform and uh, purchase the service online. So, and we are um, also would like to talk to you if you have any questions. So um, yeah, uh, and uh, we've already received uh, many of the questions. Yeah. So let's go into the Q&A session very quickly. Yeah, so uh, Laura, I've already received uh, the questions. So the first question is about uh, uh, how do you find uh, contact in China who can uh, help source for you? I think you, um, uh, Laura, you are on mute. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think you already covered this question very well. So, yes, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, the next question is uh, can you cover implications and the benefits of manufacturing under license arrangements? Um, frankly speaking, we don't have much experience in this uh, business model. I know that uh, some companies, they're doing the license, uh, I mean, the under license agreement, but uh, 
since we don't have the, the case on hand, so uh, I don't think I can, I can currently, I don't have too much to share, but uh, uh, it's, uh, if, if someone has this kind of uh, uh, approach, we can further discuss, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think I, um, I in, in the past, uh, I have several clients, uh, this kind of uh, licensing uh, model, uh, I think I can share with this culture afterwards. And also, as you yeah. mentioned, we can always put the clients into the right connection. Um, That's right, yeah. yeah sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next question is, um, what is the best way of leveraging the Chinese supply chain? in this uh, kind of special period of trade war between oh, US and China. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, it's it's interesting question actually. Uh, it seems like uh, quite a lot of uh, customers, especially overseas customers, they have this, they had this kind of concern at the very beginning. But I think we need to think about this thing in two parts. The first one is you, there's nothing we can do because it's a, it's, a, it's really two big superpowers that are fighting each other, you know. But let's talk about the business itself. Although that the trade war started uh, since the, the Trump presidency period, but you see that the number, I mean, the US companies, they're stu still doing business with the Chinese manufacturers. And the numbers may be slightly dropped, but not significantly at all. But if you're not, I mean, it's really, really depends on what kind of a business you're in. If you're in the like the network or like the security or military related business, yes, please reconsider doing business with the Chinese manufacturer. Or maybe you can do like the, you can outsource just a part of your production to Chinese suppliers. Those are non-sensitive part. And then you can ship them back to the US to do the integration, to do the final assembly there. This, is, this, this can be approached. But uh, more often, I see that the US companies and some other the companies from other countries, they're still doing business with China because not all of the product are, are tax sensitive. And if, but one thing you can do is try to avoid doing business with those uh, you know, if, if you're doing big business with uh, one of the supplier who also doing business with the Huawei or, or some other companies that being put into the entity list, then you need to reconsider to ship the, the, the order to some other companies. Because in China, like I mentioned, there are more than 350,000 manufacturers in China. It's not that, that hard to get another one to replace that one. Yeah, yeah sure. this is my advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I, I agree. It depends on the like sector, and also uh, I think is uh, um, uh, is also a good time to um, reassess your supply chain and to see uh, how you can like change or adjust your supply chain strategy in China. And because of yes. the advantage of Chinese supply chain, you may not be able to easily adjust. Yeah, but yes, it, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, the, the fundamental thing is the it's what, what really kills your business. It's your it's your you cannot make the delivery. You know, it's not because of the, the trade war to kill your business. It's uh, you cannot make the delivery. You know, you will lose the customer or the market share. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So the mm -hmm. next two okay. questions are in particular related to the uh, legal and IP. So, uh, okay. yeah, sorry, we are a bit of overrun now. And uh, mm -hmm. what the question is, what are the things to watch out uh, uh, when drafting a contract to work with the Chinese suppliers? Yeah, I, I know the, the previous session, I mean, the last, uh, the most recent webinar that uh, Prefish uh, held uh, covers this kind of topic. So I think, uh, yeah, uh, I will I will see something about the, from my practice. The first thing is, uh, of course, you need to have a better preparation. Like I mentioned, that if, you, if you're an innovation company, you better have a plan ahead your, your IP strategy 
before you started doing business with Chinese or, or any other uh, outsourced manufacturer. Uh, the second thing is uh, there's uh, some, some techniques that you can, you can apply is uh, like the, uh, if you're having the software as well, you may, you may have the, you, you may want, don't disclose your source code to, to, to your suppliers. And also you participate more in the integration or you can separate like uh, the, the part of the hardware you allocated to one of the suppliers and uh, some other part you do, you, you know, assign the second supplier. So at least it will minimize the risk. But the, uh, another thing is uh, actually, you know, the very, very more important is you find a reliable supplier and a reputable supplier. That's why what I mentioned the, the due diligence check, the, the factory audit and due diligence check is very important. If some of the manufacturers that they are doing business with those are big names, big uh, international names, they don't want to jeopardize their reputation by stealing your, your IP, you know, they, they suffer more. So that's, uh, that's the two points that I can make. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, the, the uh, the collaboration with the, your supplier started uh, like from the very beginning then you mm -hmm. uh, like have identified who is your the right partner the right supplier yes yeah. you're right and in terms of the contract i agree that ip protection like uh, the, the commercial terms and also the governing law would be uh, uh, very important uh, for the mm -hmm. for, for the actual uh, collaboration process yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, because of limited time, we have to uh, like answer the other questions to the clients uh, directly after the webinar uh, by emails or a separate call. Yeah, sure. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the IP uh, protection and the contracts, we have another webinar. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have the re recording available online as well, uh, which I will uh, share with. Uh, uh, the attendees today. Yeah, thank you, Laura, for uh, yeah. for today's sharing, and uh, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And um, it's uh, it's near the time, uh, it's near the end of today's webinar, and uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining. And uh, at Crayfish, we share lots of insights, practical tips, and also. Uh, webinar information on our platform. Do welcome to read our blogs and the insights free resources online. And uh, I, I'm also very delighted to introduce our webinar on next Thursday, which is how to do short video uh, marketing in China. So thank you uh, all very much for joining today's webinar and I look forward to seeing you again soon.